Hello Oakville, I'm Lindsay Marshall. And I'm Katie Schrader. And here's what's going on around OHS. Six OHS students have been accepted into the May Gallery photo exhibit at Webster University. Congratulations to Ivana Bala, Matthew Churko, Bella Halley, Grant Howison, Taylor Coring, and Max Talley. The students' photos will be on display in the May Gallery through January 22nd. The annual Magical Singers Dinner Theater Christmas Show will be presented virtually this year. The performance is called 2020, a disgruntled magical experience. You can find the show on the OHS Choir Facebook and Instagram pages, as well as the Oakville High School website and myohsonline.com. The Student Council is sponsoring Cookies, Cocoa, and Cramming during intervention time on January 11th. This is your chance to get help from teachers as students prepare for the final week of the first semester. Congratulations to Leila Pozhezik. She has won national recognition at the Student Media Contest at the National High School Journalism Convention. Leila earned an honorable mention in the yearbook copy and caption sports category. And speaking of yearbook, the 2021 Tiger Paw Yearbook is on sale at a discount rate until December 31st. If you order the book by that date, you can save $5 off the final price of the book. The book can be ordered at yearbookordercenter.com, order number 10784. For Around OHS, I'm Isabella Worthland. Since returning to virtual learning in November, OHS students have seen changes in the connected schedule. Here's Isabella's story on intervention time. OHS's virtual schedule has changed since blended learning, specifically the schedule of intervention time. Intervention time is a uh, two-hour block of time that we have available um, during our connected model where students can schedule appointments with teachers um, or teachers can schedule appointments with students and students can come into the building um, and receive instructional support. Um, they can work on late work or missing work, uh, retake quizzes, um, really anything that they need um, to get with um, some interaction with the teacher. So both high schools work together um, and determine that having intervention time uh, kind of in the middle of the day for a longer amount of time uh, would be better in that um, the fatigue hadn't set in yet as a student you know you've only been through uh, half your classes uh, you know by 9 45 or so which is when intervention time starts um, and then we also have access to all of our district buses um, during that time oh it just teachers are finding great benefit in intervention time it's been really helpful getting kids in the building and helping them raise their grades. We're a very project-based department, um, and so every day this week I have students signed up to come in and work. Um, some of them are sewing, some of them are cooking, but they're getting stuff done. I know some kids think it's like way too much time in the middle of the day uh, off school. Um, it does give kids time to do their homework, and then the kids who are like falling behind, struggling with their grades, it really helps them catch up. We're providing like every opportunity for them to get here. We're giving them the transportation, we're giving them the time, and it's a chunk of time where they can come to school and they can accomplish something. I've got my office hours Google Meet open, so typically two to three kids drop in a day, not a whole lot. They're in class, I kind of just kind of help guide them, let them work on stuff, and if they have que questions about things, I'm there to give them like guidance that in-person allows. OHS will remain in the connected model until the end of the semester. This includes the schedule of intervention time. For Around OHS, I'm Isabella Worthland. Many OHS students have found things to do during the pandemic. One student has found her passion outdoors. Here's the story. So I've always loved hiking and whenever quarantine hit, I naturally wanted to get outside because I was stuck inside all day and there was nothing to do. So at the beginning of summer, I wanted to challenge myself to get outside my comfort zone and go to many different parks around the St. Louis area and kind of just explore Missouri a little bit more. I made the Instagram account originally to um, kind of like just have it for memories. Like I didn't really intend to um, like make it a blog or anything. I kind of just did it to post pictures that I'd have. I wasn't even going to put captions on or let anybody follow it. But I began to hike with friends and family because it was a way for me to safely see my friends and family and a way to get outside and just enjoy nature with them. And that was kind of the thing that drove me the most was getting to, see, getting to see my friends and family and getting to bring them along with something that I really love.
My all-time favorite trail was at Millstream Gardens Conservation Area. It's so pretty there, but as, as some of my others were Mark Twain State Park, Bluff View Trail, Forest Park, of course, and then the Trail Among the Trees, among many other. So I made the Instagram account and I started letting people follow and I just kind of had fun with it. I don't know, it was kind of a joke at first, like I was just posting the post, but now it's become like a thing I just love to do and I've kept it going throughout the summer and now into the fall and winter. If you have ever been to Rich's Frozen Custard, you have probably recognized a few familiar faces. Jojo Labrier has more. With the rapid spread of COVID-19, this popular spot in Oakville has not slowed down since the start of the pandemic. Hi, me and you. Because we're so young, it kind of makes it difficult for us to like, run the business, basically. But I feel like we get a lot of stuff done because we have a lot of good workers and they stay on task for the most part. Over the summer when Corona was happening, we were wrapped like around the entire plaza. And again, it was a bunch of teenagers working, so it was extremely difficult to serve people because it's just a bunch of teenagers running it. And a lot of the times people took their frustrations out on us, but we're so young, like we don't really know how to handle that. Nobody's really been through that before. Uh, it's really affected it because we get really long lines because we only do drive through. We don't have the patio or the like open area open. So it makes us work a lot harder than we have to work. Despite the stress from the long lines, the Oakville employees are making the most of their time together. Awesome. They're all my friends, but they can get really annoying sometimes. And we have a lot of fun, but we work hard, so it's awesome. Welcome to Rich's. How you doing today? <laughs> Rich. That's a different kind of guy. He's awesome. He's uh, really nice and he's funny. He likes to be perfect. I bet a lot of our friends have said that and uh, he really makes you work. That is, he really makes you work. He's a great boss because he always preaches how much he appreciates us and he puts a lot of trust in us considering he basically lets us run this. Working somewhere else would be extremely boring because Rich's is very eventful. There's always something going on and literally, oh my God, I don't know what else to say. Have a great night. Rich's Frozen Custard will remain open throughout the winter, closing on nine on the weekdays and 9.30 Friday and Saturdays. I'm Jojo Labrie for Around OHS. Business has been good this year at Rich's Frozen Custard. It has also been good for the one drive-in movie theater in the St. Louis area. Riley Heather and Eva Beidel have the story. I almost feel guilty saying it, but it's the best year we've ever had. The Skyview Drive-In Movie Theater has been open since 1949, but 2020 has been a year like no other. Well, since we're the only safe place that families can go and get away from their house, it's been a very good year. If you see behind me, you can see the speaker poles that are here from way back when, when we still had speakers. And normally we part, put two cars between each pole. And because of uh, restrictions, we only put one car between poles, which gives about 15 feet of separation. So if you're talking about social distancing of six feet, we exceed that tremendously. Even people you know, sit outside in their lawn chairs, they're way more than six feet away from any other people around them. Um, people have to wear masks to go into the concession stand or to go inside the building to the restrooms. Normally we would open the end of March or the beginning of April. We didn't get open until May the 8th. We pushed it back for two reasons. One is that the, all the movies that we were going to play at the beginning of the season were pulled. And then Illinois was shut down. Uh, we weren't allowed to open until May the 8th. And we opened up with all retro movies. Uh, we've been playing them all year. Skyview Drive-In has experienced great success during this pandemic. But that can't be said for many other businesses. I know we have a lot of people that came for the first time. People have been very nice and have supported our business very well. I know so many other businesses are failing, have closed. Some of them may never open again. A lot of indoor theaters are really suffering because of the fact that movie studios are pulling all of their movies. All the new movies from this year, except for a couple that, that went live streaming, all the movies from this year are gonna be played next year, along with all the movies that they were gonna be playing next year. So I mean, we should have a glut of new movies. We wish the best for the Skyview Drive-In as they continue to navigate the challenges of COVID-19 this new year. With Eva Bottle behind the camera, I'm Riley Heather for Around OHS. And now, 
Let's go back to Isabella Worthland and take a look at OHS Sports. Congratulations to Regina Agazabal. This volleyball standout has been named the Conference Sportswoman of the Year. She was also named All-State. Winter Sports is in full swing. The varsity boys and girls basketball team finished second in their season opening tournaments. Both teams will play Melville tonight. The varsity girls tip off at 5.30, followed by the boys' contest at 7 o'clock. The wrestling team opened this season with a victory over Brentwood. They entered this week with a 4-1 record. Congratulations to Ibrahim Akmotov, Jacob Nuspol, and Julian Davies for placing second in their recent tournaments. And ice hockey is off to a tough start with a very young team. They entered this week with a 0-6 record. Here's a look at their upcoming schedule. That's it for sports. I'm Isabella Worthland. Speaking of hockey, a former OHS standout hockey player hopes to begin his journey to a professional career. Sarah Bradley has this story on her big brother, Chase Bradley. Waits with it, cross ice, Bradley finally scores! October 7th is a date Oakville native Chase Bradley will never forget. I was excited and kind of relieved because it was getting in later rounds of the draft, so I was more relieved than anything, but once I kind of settled in, I was super excited and probably the happiest I've ever been in my life. Chase has traveled all around the world playing the game he loves since he was four years old, but he still keeps his hometown memories closest to his heart. One of my best memories was probably playing for Oakville in uh, the state semis against SLU when we uh, won the semifinal game. And then just being around the guys and going to high school with some and having all the fans coming to games was a pretty cool experience. Because of the hard work and dedication he put in, as well as the support from family and friends, Chase got drafted into the NHL by the Detroit Red Wings in round seven of the 2020 draft. This year I'm playing in Sioux City, Iowa for the Musketeers in the USHL. And uh, after this, I'll be going to college at University of Connecticut and uh, after that, we'll see where it takes me. I would just like to say thank you to everyone that supported me, and I definitely couldn't be here without you. As Chase's sister, I am beyond proud of him. His family and friends cannot wait to see what is in store for him next. I'm Sierra Bradley for Around OHS. Good luck to Chase as he pursues his pro career. With Christmas just around the corner, Oakville students are spending much of their time looking at local Christmas decorations. That's exactly what a few of our broadcast students did. Let's check it out. Are you looking for some fun COVID-friendly activities to do this holiday season? Well, we have the idea for you. Introducing Holiday Light Hopping, a fun, safe way to go look at Christmas lights and get into the holiday spirit. Started by Laura Thick and her nephew, Mitch Miller, they wanted to inform the people of St. Louis with the exclusive holiday lights in the area. The website has over 140 locations with the best light shows and decorations all over St. Louis. They also give you several routes to follow, which take you from house to house. Aaron and I followed the South County route, which took us all around Oakville and showed us the best decorations. The route took us to nine different houses, all in under an hour. But these lights don't just randomly pop up after Thanksgiving. We spoke to Joe Vaught, an Oakville resident, to find out his process in setting up his lights. Three or four weeks, I believe. Okay, you know, just a couple hours here and a couple hours there. Putting up Christmas lights is a long and tedious process, but the results of the hard labor and time-consuming operation is worth it in the end. Well, I used to play in a band. I had all the stuff for a big light show for the band. And so eventually I figured out a way to put it to use in my yard and basically like tripled it. Last year, somebody asked me on Facebook if we wanted some light. We figured there'd be a little bag of lights. They brought six giant trash bag <laughs> lights. I can't even put them up because I'll blow, blow a fuse, you know? <laughs> For more information, visit HolidayLightHopping.com. If you think you have what it takes to be on one of these routes or have seen an amazing light display in your area, contact the owners on the website and you could possibly be added to the list to bring people joy. Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Well, that wraps up today's show. We hope you have a wonderful winter break. Thanks for watching, Oakville, and have a happy holidays. Selects like the best of the best to work at Ridges. Um, <laughs> that's why I'm here. I have to do that again? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay. You are so bad at this. Me? Yes, you. It's really gr Oh, that's my mom. Can I get my chicken wings real quick? <laughs> <laughs>